Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Please look in the description box below to find out more about the channel, to find out all the different platforms that you can follow the Master's Voice on. There is an excellently translated Spanish channel that is called Canal Profetico, La Voz del Señor, and we're currently uploading videos on Rumble and BitChute for now. I think there might even be a Bright Eon channel, so I'll make sure to leave those alternate links. Um, it, it's good for the Spanish speaking population to be able to get access to the Lord's words in your own language. Um, it's unfortunate that there's no way to actually have all languages translated. There's so many of them, but here, if you wait for about 48 hours, I think might be 24, it might be 48, but if you just give it a day or two, all the subtitles in various languages are available through the YouTube translation. And so you can click the toggle button. It looks like a gear wheel, and then you can choose auto translate. And then it drops down a stunning array of languages that you can use to translate these videos into your own language. Unfortunately, it's just subtitles, but still that is an option. And so this prophecy is from May, 2022. I did not write the date on it. And so I don't have the exact day that I had this dream, but the title of the prophecy is the Russian occupation, the Russian occupation, May, 2022. And this dream was about how life will be when Russia comes here. So it was quite a candid look that the Holy Spirit gave me. And I've spoken a lot about dreams, how dreams are important. Dreams can be a way that God will warn a person, even if it's not a saved person, unsaved people have dreams all the time, all the time. It's not exclusively to Christians. Dream can be a way that God can make a promise to a person, such as the promise that he made to Joseph. Dreams can be a way that God can actually use to speak to Kings. The Lord spoke to to Nebuchadnezzar and he spoke to Pharaoh, high leaders using their dreams. And dreams are also very much a part of the prophetic function. When the Lord calls you, he will speak to a true prophet as a friend using dreams as a medium to communicate truths, warnings. And in the case of the ministry that God has given me, it's judgment. So please don't expect anything here. When I'm reading these dreams, it's not assumed that anyone will feel good listening to these dreams. And then it's also very important for Christians to understand that you don't have to feel good about everything. You don't have to expect that there's always sugar at the end of the tea. Sometimes it's just the tea so that we drink it and we become strong and brace for what God says is coming. And so this dream was what life was like in America when Russia came. So the dream was just gray. Everything was just gray. It was just a gray atmosphere. The sky always seemed heavy and overcast, and it always seemed to be cold or something like that, just uncomfortable. And um, there was a war going on in the dream uh, when Russia came here. And that's because when Russia comes here after that initial first strike, so after initial, um, the initial sucker punch where Russia unprovoked will strike the United States, or should we just say unexpected will strike the United States. There's obviously going to be resistance and there's going to be fighting. And so that was going on in the dream, but life was very heavy and hard to bear. And America was so much like Russia during uh, her earlier Cold War days. Very much like that. So it was dull, it was heavy, there was so much poverty and economic distress, and that's because the U.S. economy crashed because of this war. So in the beast system, there will definitely be a different form of economy. There will be different money, there will be different life, there will be even affluence during that time. But when Russia comes here to attack this country, uh, the stock market crashed, the economy crashed, and everything was just destroyed. And I said here, by the knowledge of the Lord given to me, that there will be a time in America's history that is called the Russian occupation. So that is the title of this prophecy, the Russian occupation. But there will also be a time in America's history called the free era and here is what I saw happening in America in the free era. People were still allowed to have Bibles and prayer. 
So pastors were still allowed to run churches. That is one thing that stuck out to me or was impressed upon my heart. Pastors were allowed to preach about Jesus and other religions were also allowed to practice. So I saw that imams in the United States, this is the Muslim religion, um, Islam, they were still allowed to give the call to prayer. So the free era basically was an era where we will have freedoms. And one of the main freedoms that we will have is religious freedom. So for all we know, the free era is actually talking of the time we're living right now. You can practice your, your religion. There's freedom of religion. Nobody is stopping you and things like that. But in the future, when America begins to go through her changes, I saw that the time in the past where people had religious freedoms and civil rights, it was called the free era. When the free era ended, new laws were made stating that prayer, church, and any form of worship to any God that was not the God of the Antichrist was punishable by death. So when the free era came to an end, it was shut down because new laws were made that shut down the freedom to worship the God that we worship, Yah, the God of heaven, the father of the Lord Jesus Christ. No one was allowed to practice any form of of religion or worship any God that was not the antichrist God. And if you did it, that was a crime punishable by death. And here are Bible verses to prove it. And the prophecy that you can also look at, which explains this tiny piece in depth is called the man of sin. That prophecy is all about Barack Obama, how he will outlaw prayer completely and say that no one is to worship any God during his time of rulership. So the first scripture is this, the second beast was giving power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. And this is Revelation 13 and five, basically saying that the first beast is going to assist this, the second, the second beast is going to assist the first beast and give him power to give breath to the image that will be raised up by the first beast. So the second beast is the religious authority and the first beast is the political authority and the political authority will raise up a God and say that everyone should give allegiance to that God, exactly like how King Nebuchadnezzar made his many metaled statue and said that everyone should bow down to it and worship it. Revelation 13, five, the second scripture is this, he will speak against the most high and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times, and half a time. So this is speaking of the time when the little horn, as he is referred to in other parts of the scripture, will speak against the most high. You can also find out that he's speaking against the most high in Revelation 13. And he will oppress the holy people and he will think to change the times and the laws. So this is basically just what the free era is saying, that new laws will be brought in that do away with civil liberties and religious freedoms. And it says that he will bring oppression to the holy people. So this is what the free era is saying, that you won't be able to go to church anymore. And for instance, the Muslims will not be able to give the call to prayer anymore. And holy people will be delivered into the hands of this oppressor for a time, times, and half a time. So after the free era will come a time when identifying openly as a believer will get you killed without exception. So I hope you will listen clearly to what was said. It's very important to listen clearly to what was said. Identifying openly. So it doesn't say that every believer will be killed. It says that identifying openly as a believer will get a person killed without right of recourse, without a trial, and without exception. So no exception, whether you are young or old or middling, no exception. If there is an open identification, brazen open practicing of faith, but for the purposes of this, we are talking about how life will be under Russian occupation and life will be like during the Iron Curtain era. 
Russia was very sequestered then. Russia was very um, not as developed then. Russia was a place where people just had naturally suspicion. Everybody who was outside naturally had suspicion towards Russia. And that was part to, partly because of how America was painting Russia, but also because of how Russia was painting herself. And so life that I saw in this dream was exactly like how it is in the war movies. So if you notice in the war movies that are made here, first, there's a lot of frenetic activity. Invasion will happen. The, the country will be invaded and people are running. So there's this running to save life and there's this fighting back and there's this strong burst of war in the beginning. But then once you are beaten, the dream then changed to showing me scenes of everyday life of how conquered people now have to get on with the business of living. So after your enemy beats you, you have to accept your defeat and then you have to get on with life. And that's how America felt like we were in old Russia because a lot of things will get destroyed obviously. And we will be catapulted back, maybe not to the stone age, but it was like old Russia before Russia became modern and progressive and I've said in previous prophecies, as the Lord has stated, that America will become a colony of Russia and that Russia will, Russian will be the official state language. So they'll be speaking Russian on the TV and they'll be using Russian as the means of communication and they will be rebranding things and they will be commandeering things. One of the main things that they will commandeer is homes. They will commandeer homes. They will commandeer vehicles. They will take over resources that belong to Americans. They will live in American homes. The Lord has said that they will take American women to be their comfort wives. So it is better for us to hear the fullness of the prophecy because that is how life was. The place was poor, very strict, extremely well monitored and well controlled. And so in the stream, one day, a soldier, call him Tibov, Terabov, Timov. His name was something like that. When I woke up, I couldn't remember exactly. He came to where I was and he said, get ready because you're going to fight for Russia. It's time for you to join the army. I've been sent to get you. So pack up some things of your choice and let's get going to the war. And I looked at this man like he was crazy because you don't look at someone who just works with paper all day and then say, come and let's go fight a war. And I asked him to his face, I said, what do I look like to you? Do I look like somebody, somebody who knows how to fight war? Is there anything warish about me? Um, I can't handle weapons and I can't fight anything. And I wasn't rude to the man, obviously, because he was a soldier, he had a weapon and I wasn't angry, but I was just telling him the facts. I was just saying, sir, look around and read the room. And he was equally as patient. And he said to me, you have to fight. Here is a bag. Look in this bag and choose what you need from it. Add a few personal items to it, and then we have to go. And so this is what I understood, that forced conscription, even for women, is going to be part of the Russian occupation. So I shared a dream here already that is called Super Soldiers. And um, that dream was maybe end of July, August that I published the dream. And I said that in that dream, I saw that I was a woman who had been fighting war and I'd already done six tours because there was a terrible war going on in the United States that had ripped up the country, ripped up the road, ripped up communications, and that most of the nation was just isolated and you had to walk everywhere if you, if you didn't have a really good Humvee or if you didn't have a really good off-road vehicle, then you were going to be forced to be walking in that America everywhere. And I had been discharged from the army and it turned out in the dream that God was using that dream to reveal that America has a super soldier program that contains men and women, people who take certain types of off limit drugs, people who are being stretched to the limit of natural human capability and more. So the Lord used that dream to show that those serums were used on me and I was extremely strong. I had extreme longevity, extreme stamina, did not get tired, was able to keep up with the men and had been fighting in that war for six tours. And then I got sick of the war and I said, I'm going back to my family. And so I was discharged and I was on my way across the country and that dream is up. And so you can watch, uh, 
And that was when I first saw that women are going to fight this war. And now um, time has passed because that dream was published a while back. And now time has passed and you see that the United States Army is beginning to tease conscription for women that's whispering in the wind. And we have congressmen saying, what kind of country asks its daughters to go to war? That's because these people know that a war is coming. And the Lord says that they will poke and they will prod and they will do everything until at least that civil war starts here. They will not rest until the civil war that comes first starts here. So just bear that in mind. And so this man was patient and he said, choose your, choose your personal items. And then here is this, he gave me this military bag and he said, choose a few items from here and let's get going to the war. And because he was just, you know, he was just so patient. So I finally took the bag. This is Russia now. This is what people will be told. Americans will be told, this is Russia now. This is not America. If you live here, you have to sign up to fight our enemies. So that is forced conscription. And people did. People did sign up. They were forced to do it, and they did. And here is why. People did it to keep their families and themselves safe. There was a lot of information that was flooding into my heart in the dream. And one of the pieces of information that was flooding into my heart is that in war, loyalties change once a lot of people die. So previous to the war, there's always a lot of talk and a lot of chatter and a lot of assumptions and a lot of they could never and we will never and a lot of nevers fly around. But what I saw in real life is that when death has sunk it, its claws into a nation, to the point that almost everybody has a story of loss, a story of pain and suffering, then loyalties change and people are not as interested in talk. And what I was seeing is that after you see enough people getting shot in the street for disobedience, for deserting, for resistance, after you see a lot of death and suffering, people come to realize what wise people should already know. Death is not that interesting. And it's much more interesting to find something to live for. So death makes people realign their priorities. And Israel is a prime example of that when it came to captivity. After Israel continued to sin and sin and sin until the Lord allowed them to go into Babylonian captivity, he delivered a prophecy through Jeremiah. And the starting of it were, 70 years are determined at Babylon. You will be in Babylon for 70 years. Once they heard that, they got the message. And the primary message is, if you're 55 and the prophecy says that you're going to be in captivity for 70 years, it's understood that these are not the years of Seth and Methuselah. You are being told that the foreign nation you are being taken to is now your forever home. You will die in that country. You will never see your homeland again. The message that God was giving to them, young and old who went into captivity, is that you're not getting out of this captivity. I will not save the day. I, God, will not do anything to help you because I am the one who brought this judgment upon you. So my suggestion is that you better make farms, you better grow crops, have children, read your Bible, repent, and get used to this because you are going to wait for the full 70 years before I rescue you. Therefore, for the time being, nothing is going to alter your current reality. And Israel was well used to God doing this because God did this to them when they came out in the Exodus. The age limit that God set at that time was 20 years old. You had to be 20 years old and below. This means that if you were 21 years old, you would not be allowed to enter into the promised land. 
Can you think of such a judgment coming from the God that people always say, oh, but God could never. God isn't saying these prophecies because God couldn't say things like that. It's just because people are unfamiliar with the word of God and the word of God is not taught in detail like this. I guarantee you that if pastors taught you that God is capable of pronouncing a judgment and that judgment will hold fast so that even a 21 year old will have his 30th, 40th, 50th and 60th, 70th birthday, knowing that he will never enter into the promised land just because he was one year over the margin. It would make people a lot more sober minded about understanding who God is. And it would definitely change the way that we practice our faith and how we relate to the father in terms of obedience and taking him at his word. So people decided to join the Russian side and fight for them because it meant that you could be afforded privileges. It meant that perhaps your wife and your child would be kept safe. It meant that perhaps you could be allowed to be discharged for a while to travel back home and see that wife and child and maybe even spend personal time with your wife. It meant that your wife might not get violated by the Russian soldiers because you were actively serving. And so I saw that in those times there were many powerful compelling forces that can make any man obedient. So people in this country are not familiar with war at all. War is something that people are watching in just a few sentences on West Wing miniseries and things like that. We do not know the choices on the ground that compel the hearts of men when they are in war. It's only the soldiers who have gone overseas to fight, as well as the people who live in those countries they've gone to, who are familiar with the many compelling factors in a war. So let us be sober-minded when we are hearing the things that God is saying will come. So this is what I saw in the bag. I saw normal things like body wipes and a compass and a map, things that you would expect. But I also saw some really cool things. For instance, I saw socks that prevent water. I don't know if this exists, but I was having visions in this dream. So I was having several visions in this dream. And one of the things I saw is when I, when I pulled out these socks from the bag and I held them, I had a vision of myself out in the forest, out in the forest, in the war. And by mistake, I stepped in a puddle but my, my foot didn't get wet. So water went into the boot, but these socks were made of a strange mesh fabric and my foot was still warm and dry inside the boot. And another thing I saw was hard dried food that you need to pour water on and then it will come to life. It will puff up and then you can eat it. And I also saw some exploding silver balls, excuse me, please, that really fascinated me. And as I held these balls, I also had a vision of what they can do. So you hold them and you're out in the war place, I guess. And then what you do is you throw it hard on the ground and then it explodes like a firecracker. So it makes a bang. It makes a very loud explosion sound and it also makes some horrible tasting smoke that blinds people temporarily. And then once they start coughing and they're reacting to the noise and the shock and the horrible smoke in their eyes and in their mouth, then you have time to shoot them or you have time to run away. But I saw that the balls were so sensitive that even if you were to drop them by mistake on a soft, damp, marshy floor of a jungle, they could still explode. So of course you had to carry them very carefully. And they came, they came almost like a square and they would all be lined up and then you could break one off and throw it down. I can't explain it any better like that. They were all circle, 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 and they were joined by little little silver sticks. So you would break one off almost like a piece of candy and then you would throw it down and that's how it was. So anyway, um, I took a long time to pack this bag. I was dithering because I did not want to go to this war. And this patient, this soldier was equally as patient because he could see I did not want to go. And his whole demeanor was, if you take all year, I'm going to wait here until you are ready. So please let this be in the minds of people as they're hearing this. And so at night now, the president of Russia came to this particular area or barracks or wherever he came to us. And once he came, all the soldiers snapped to attention, but I was just standing casually because I'm not a soldier and I'm not going to start breaking my back to act like something that I'm not. So this man walked past the soldiers and he came right up to me and he said, so this is you. 
And I didn't answer because who else would it be? I'm myself. And so he says, so this is you. This is you at last. We know you. So this is you at last. And I was puzzled and I was thinking, where does this man know me from? I don't know this man. But then the understanding came into my heart that this is exactly what God did with the prophet Jeremiah. When Israel finally fell, when Judah finally fell to the Babylonians and they came in, the chief of the generals came up to him and told him, we're not going to hurt you. We know you because while we were outside, you know, we heard that your God told your people to surrender. Your God told your people not to resist, but they did not listen. And so we're not taking you into captivity. You can go wherever you like. And so that is how this man knew that somehow these videos, these prophecies, these blogs, they're going everywhere. And I've, I even said in this prophecy that I see that even here, it is not just ordinary people who watch these videos. There are people much higher up who will never confess that they are watching these videos. But I know because the Lord has told me that this message is going further into more places and people are wondering who is this and how does she know the things that she knows. All I can say is that if you spend any time at all on the physical blog, reading the messages that are there, reading the scriptures, reading the particular turn of phrase, you will know why this platform is called the master's voice because the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking here and making his end times revelations known. So after speaking to me, the president walked over to a throne. It was an iron throne, very, very high and towering throne with a tall back iron throne that was overlaid with gold. But when most people looked at it, they only saw the gold, but God opened my eyes and I saw that the throne had been created first by pouring a heavy blackish iron. It formed out of thin air. And then when Putin sat upon it, gold was poured upon that throne. And I have shared here that this man is the Lord's special instrument for the end days. So some people, they get angry and they're like, oh no, you're pro-Russian and you're, you're hyping up Russian. And this is because you are not thinking and you are not listening and you are attempting to interact with end times prophecy with your emotions. And I simply can't match you at that level. I'm doing a spiritual work here and what is true will be spoken. God has selected Russia and China as end times instrument to judge an enemy. And that enemy is the USA, the United States of America. After the judgment of Russia, America, you will not be here. After the judgment of America, you will not be here to see the other things that Russia will do. Russia will go very far afield. Russia is going to take a lot of countries. One of the continents that Russia is going to attempt to run roughshod over is Africa. Africa, Russia is going to come over to you and they are going to show you an amalgam of faces. They will rule very fairly in some places and in other places they will be very oppressive and they will have what I can only describe as the war machine. But this thing is just not like a tank. I think it's a symbolic representation because it has claws and I see that claws, those claws coming and tearing up the ground of Africa. They are very much going to be digging in that continent and things like that. And they're going to show you one face, the face of an ally. But later on, Russia and China are going to change their face. But God says that if you cry out to him in the continent of Africa, he will deliver you. So that is just an FYI to Africa. So this man, he walks over to this throne that is iron on the inside, but gold on the outside. And this is the understanding of this symbology in the dream. Vladimir Putin's rule will be very hard and heavy for his enemies. This man is going to have a distinct and an iron fisted style of rulership that will also coincide with some kind of golden age for Russia. So I've spoken of some of the visions that I saw that the land of Russia was locked in ice. These are visions all the way from 2019. I saw Russia locked in ice 
and the bear was locked in that ice. But then a warm wind began to blow from heaven and it was like bloom, bloom and grow. And the ice melted and that field that was formerly all icy became a very beautiful meadow with flowers blooming everywhere. And the bear woke up from hibernation and the bear was looking around the territory and testing its strength to see what it could do. So Putin is going to be very hard on enemies, but at the same time, Russia is going to be experiencing an international golden age and her allies will join in and benefit from that golden age with her. Meaning that as Russia goes to the top, everybody that Russia tops and says, you know what? I see a friend in you. You know what? You've got a friend in me. They're also going to be ascending as Russia is going through her period of ascendancy. Russia will be given a period of grace to rule both her allies and her enemies. She will be good to her friends, but she will be harsh to her enemies. As Russia and her allies are going to the top, other nations are going to fall in power. This will be a season of gold on the outside and iron on the inside. And God has already spoken of things such as Russia does not feel very isolated because they won't let her join NATO because she has spies in NATO. And the Lord says that they never have a meeting and they never have any kind of conferencing where Russia is not aware of what is going on. Russia gets told by moles in there, whoever the moles may be, and she gets told of everything that is happening. So he says that she's not even bothered that she is not given an official invite to be part of that. And so when the president sat down, when Vladimir Putin sat down on that throne, what really shocked me in this dream is that he then switched off like a robot. And I spoke of this recently, I think, in a recent prophecy where I made mention of it and said that there are many of these high-ranking leaders that have synthetic versions of themselves. So he walked up to this throne and then he put his head on his chest as if he went to sleep. And as he lowered his head, there was a sound like, Shoom, exactly like robots in the movies when they're switching off or when they've been cut off from the power source or when the overwhelming AI grid is finally destroyed, how everything just powers down with that sound. This man powered down, his head dropped, his eyes blanked out and it became like he was asleep. And I was so shocked and I cried out in my heart, Oh Lord, this man is not human. This is an Android. And the Lord said, yes, a lot of them in power are actually high value androids or synthetics that are under the control of the enemy, under the control of the devil. So I've spoken of these people that are walking around here, looking like flesh and blood, interacting falling in love with people, marrying people, and they are not people. But when I woke up, the Lord spoke to me about this and he said, they're high functioning robots made of premium materials that are just like humanity. And a lot of these doll people are in impossibly high positions of power. They can easily be replaced when they wear out or wear down just like when the drill bit of your electric drill gets old, you buy a new one. And so the last thing that I was told is that these nations are going to join Russia in its wartime expansion. Armenia, Slovakia, Czechoslovakia, and North Korea. They will be part of the Russian armed forces. Russia will have a greatly expanded war machine a very great war force made of countries that have always sided with her, either in war or politics. Turkey is one such country. Yah has referred to Turkey as a nation of Russian sympathies. And remember that the Lord says that um, the president of Turkey does not have any interest in and does not have a heart for the United States. The Lord went on to say, there are many Russian sympathizers in the United Nations, but fear of America is keeping them silent for now. They fear America's power, and because of that, it's not yet time for them to reveal that they actually prefer Russia over the other members of the UN Security Council. They prefer, this is him speaking, they prefer the way that Russia does things, 
But the timing for this to be revealed, as with many things I have told you, is not yet. When the time comes to reveal who is who, who hates who, and who supports who, you will see the United Nations reorganizing itself into surprising factions, clans, cliques, groups, and enclaves. Call it what you will, but this division will be visible even to the public in the future. It will be well recognized that the United Nations is not so united anymore. It will become split along faction lines and all this flowery language that they use about unity and oneness will not be enough to mend the rift. So here it is. And these are these are the revelations that you can actually see and use as the little minute hands on the clock to see how we are going in terms of God's prophetic truth. You can use these kinds of tidbits. When you see nations like Armenia and North Korea and South Korea and Japan beginning to cooperate more and not be so interested in American hegemony, when you begin to see cliques and factions forming in the United Nations, such as the Western unions will begin to, the Western nations will begin to vote more in a block and then traditional allies, instead of voting along with that block, such as a lot of South American and African countries always vote with the Western bloc, but now you might find more and more of them abstaining, or you might find the bolder ones, especially with BRICS gaining so much momentum. You might find the bolder ones standing straight up and say, we're with Russia and China on this vote. So God says that we will see clans, we will see groups, we will see enclaves and cliques. We will see brand new factions and alignments happening in the United Nations and all their fancy and flowery language that we are one group and we're looking out for world peace and safety and things like that. He says it will not be a able to fool anyone and it will not be able to cover the fact that it's becoming split along party lines. So this is the dream that I had and here is a recap of the warnings that are within it. Severe hardship is coming to the United States during the time that will be the Russian occupation after the initial invasion. And please understand that it will be very harsh because it will be war, it will be bombing, it will be um, attacks, it will be captivity and all kinds of things. After the smoke from that dies down, the way of life will change and it will be just like Russia during her Iron Curtain era with a weak economy, with severe shortages, with severe government monitoring. One of the things that happened is God says that, um, whereas France, when France is occupied by Russia, the Lord says that Russia will treat France like a satellite state. A satellite gets to rule itself, just like Hong Kong gets to rule itself with um, Chinese affiliation and oversight, but a colony loses its identity and basically takes on the full identity of the conquering power. And that's what America is going to be like. So there's going to be monitoring from the government, severe control, and also harsh living conditions for the conquered people of the United States. Another thing in this dream was that forced subscription conscription will happen. So men and women will be forced to fight for Russia against their own brothers in the resistance in exchange for protection, privileges, and to save their lives and their families' lives. And I've often spoken of the resistance, the sons of freedom, the patriots, people who, even, even professors, even professors who believe in liberty and um, the libertarian way of life, Men who simply will not be able to go against their conscience, not necessarily soldiers. They will also be part of the resistance. There will be Christians who will be part of this resistance. And so Russia will definitely be conscripting from among ordinary American citizens to fight these various groups that will arise. Another thing the Lord has said is that many countries are quietly supporting Russia for now because the time is not yet for them to openly reveal their preferences. They are quiet because they fear the United States. They fear her backlash. They fear becoming a victim of being isolated like Cuba or like Iran. And so they're, they're 
being diplomatic for now with where their true sympathies lie. And another thing is that there are synthetic people, that this earth is not human only, that non-human people do exist, and that a large contingent of them hold high positions of power in this world. And so please have an understanding of these things. Russia's power is being given to them by God who is using them for judgment. So those who fight against them will find their efforts wasted in the end. I saw, and I have shared in previous prophecies, that I saw U.S. freedom fighters run across the border to Canada for refuge. So these guys had been resisting in the mountains and resisting in Yellowstone and resisting in the nooks and crannies. And they were tired of the war. They were not abandoning the war, but they wanted to rest. They wanted a break from the constant exchanges and I guess the difficulties of living outside of modern urban centers or, or modern homesteads. And so they ran across the border to Canada, but Canada is that country that is going to give the Russians access through the border. Anyway, I've already shared that in one of the old prophecies that Canada will give Russia access. And then after that, she, she was feeling guilty that she had assisted the Russians in this way. So when Americans were running over the border to Canada, Canadians were taking them in, they were feeding them, they were housing them, they were hiding them. And Russia came over and Russia made it clear to Canada that we're not trying to fight you. We do not want to include you in this war, but you have to stop harboring these rebels. So hand them over and they hunted. I saw a little vision. I saw little men in David, Davy Crockett hats, Daniel Boone hats with their rifles. I saw something like a tableau Tiny little men dressed for the wilderness ran across the border into Canada and they were seeking refuge there. But I saw the Russian contingent go over the Canadian border and bring those people forcibly back. And this is because the Lord has said that if you are meant to undergo this judgment in this country, you're not going anywhere. You will stay here and go through the judgment if that is what he has planned for you. And so I saw that. I've seen freedom fighters rise against the, the coming beast government, but a lot of them were caught and they will be executed publicly as troublemakers. So this is just FYI for the beast system, that people who are resisting there, I just read in the upper part of, I think, yes, in the upper part of the previous prophecy that in the beast system, religious freedom and many other things will not be tolerated. And this is one of the things that will not be tolerated is to be a troublemaker, is to um, give speeches, is to organize resistance underground and say, we will not comply, that kind of thing. When they catch you, there will be public executions in America. They will kill people outside and they will gather all the people of that town and say, everybody come and see, and they will televise it so that it enters into our hearts like spears that whoever stands up against this peace government, this is how you're going to end. And so the final scene that I saw in this dream, for it was just a collection of scenes, and I wrote down everything when I woke up, I saw an American soldier that had been conscripted to fight for Russia, but in his heart, he hated the Russians, which is understandable, and he was waiting for a moment to turn on his captors. So I didn't know at the time I saw this man that I was actually in this person's body experiencing their emotions, but what was in his heart, this is what the man was thinking. He was thinking, they have no right to be here. They don't belong here, and I'm going to do my best to take out as many of them as I can before I die. So I was looking through his eyes, and he was adjusting his rifle scope, and he trained it on the back of a Russian soldier who was standing in front of him while they were in combat. So I think this man was laying on the ground hidden and the Russian was standing maybe behind a tree scoping out the area. And the American turned his gun on the back of the Russian and he shot, he shot three times. And all I heard was click, click, click. And no bullets came from that gun. And when the Russian heard the empty, when he heard the gun clicking, the gun was not empty. When he heard the gun click, clicking, he wasted no time. He swung around, around and he shot the guy right in the forehead. So he shot him right in the forehead. And it was at that moment that I realized that Russia has done something to the guns. The Russians did something to the guns that locked the mechanism when an American would want to use the gun on a Russian. And I said that I was completely flabbergasted because I do not understand 
by what technology a gun can recognize, for instance, a person, how does a gun know the difference between an American and a Russian? So that if you're an American holding a Russian weapon and you shoot at another American, yes, it will let the bullet fly. But then if you turn the same gun on a Russian, it would not fly. So there will be some kind of technology that is either able to recognize people groups or ethnic groups. And I saw that the guy was not able to shoot the Russian, Russian soldier with the gun that he had been given. And so he was killed. And I said, maybe this is a future gun, but it felt like Russia had done something to the weapons before they gave them to the American drafts so that they would not be able to be turncoats and turn against them if a chance arose. And so that is the dream from May, 2022, the Russian occupation. I shall continue to bring out the dreams, the revelations, the truths, the visions, and the prophecies that the Holy Spirit has given me since 2012 or until now. I am working to complete the prophecies of the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Thank you for being with me, and until I see you again, God bless you, and goodbye.